nostalgia, memories, growing up in Central Florida in the 1990s. What a bunch of sappy crap. It's the Sappy Crap Podcast. Starring Steve Bauman and Jarman Day. Welcome to the Sappy Crap Podcast, where the names are changed, but the stories are real. I'm Jarman. I'm Steve. That's right. The stories are real, or at least how our dusty brains have stored them after all this time. At this point, they're just like a fine aged wine. Covered in dust and might be vinegar by now, but you can't Some find of them out are vinegar. <laughs> until you open That's it up and true. try it. You just got to try it. Either way, they're going to get you drunk on nostalgia. <laughs> and what are we talking about this week, Steve? This week, uh, we're going to talk about natural phenomenon that is crazy weather. Right. Some weather stories. Having lived all over the place, Charmin and I have experienced all kinds of weather in all types of places around the U.S., and we're going to talk about some of our craziest weather stories. That's true. We've moved around quite a bit, so we get to see a little bit of each part of at least the U.S. Um, weather. That's right. And U.S. is a big uh, country, so we get a lot of different kinds of weather across the board. Mm-hmm. It's like being a uh, New Zealand. You know how they have such a tiny island, but yet they have so many different weathers across that little tiny island. Like you can be in the Probably ice they cap. They all the wine there because they've got all those microclimates. Yeah, like the ice cap mountains down to like plains and like jungles. It's like everything in one little tiny. We have that across just a much larger space. <laughs> That's true. We don't have a lot of good jungles, though, unfortunately. That's true. Just Florida mo- almost was more swamp than jungle, I guess. Yeah, no one wants to go there. No. That's where I'm at. <laughs> I like, I'm going to take a safari through the Florida jungle. No, I'm good. <laughs> That's basically what I feel like when I go to my car in the morning. Today, we, we just went to uh, my girlfriend and I had to go buy her pair of shoes for that. We're going to go hiking soon. So she needs some hiking oh. shoes. And we go out in there and I'm wearing my glasses and they immediately completely fog up from the bathtub humidity you walk out into. That's weather right there for you. It is mm-hmm. terrible, folks. Or right now we're in the middle of uh, July recording this episode. It's probably the worst it gets during the year in Florida. And you feel like you're walking into like molasses hot water. It's just it's not, and your whole body immediately starts to sweat. I remember. The first time I came back to Florida after having moved to Seattle, I think I probably came back for a spring break or winter break or something like that. And I was on the plane and you get that cool, crisp, dry plane air. And I remember them opening the door and like a wave. You could just feel the moisture (laughs) envelop your body as it worked from the front to the back of the plane, like in a zombie film. It's really weird. I mean, yeah, I went from going to Denver for my sister's wedding where it's a dry climate, like kind of like where you are. And then it's dry. And then I get off the plane. It's okay. But then once you walk out those double doors, every time I do it and come back to Florida to where you go to the baggage claim and you walk out to where the cars are, it just hits you in the face. It's like you're just waters going into your body in a very unpleasant way somehow. It's like being in a sauna paradise (laughs) and entered Satan's armpit. Yeah. And it's like basically a sauna without consent. You know, like it's like I didn't ask for this. I'm not prepared. I'm should in full clothes. So should I put some more water on the coals? No, please don't. I'm just going to put some more water on the coals. Damn it, Florida. I said no more water on the coals. <laughs> uh, well, my first story is about the opposite of that. Some some cold weather. Oh, okay. And that's when I was growing up in central Pennsylvania. And the blizzard of 94. Oh, boy. That's right. Uh, so we got something like four and a half to five feet of snow. Mm, it's a lot. Basically overnight. Basically overnight. That seems like a lot. Uh, we we had nine foot snow drifts besides our house. I remember they were taller than my dad. And then it got a little bit warmer for like a minute. And for a little while, the snow turned into rain uh, okay. and covered the top of the snow. And then it immediately got way colder again and then froze into a solid sheet of ice <laughs> on top of four and a half to five feet of snow. <laughs> God. It was insane. It was so hard to shovel because you had to break. You had to like chip your way through this top level. And there'd be like soft snow underneath. Yeah. Um, But it was also really cool because an eight year old, I could like build tunnels under it. Ooh. And there was basically a roof above because of the ice. Sounds dangerous. You know. Oh, my God. Yeah, I could have got I could have died. (laughs) Could have died. Speaking of kids dying. (laughs) There was there was also winter in Pennsylvania where. It snowed pretty bad, not crazy, Um, but I remember they kept canceling school, and I didn't understand why. 
And it was because after it had snowed, the temperature had plummeted like down into the tents. Oof. Um, and kids, there was some kid who I think like died waiting for his bus. Oh my God. That's terrible. And so they canceled school for like a week because they were afraid that kids were just going to freeze to death at their bus stops. That's a thing. I think they mostly will cancel things now, not because of snow. Like you don't really get as much as snow days because we have a lot better, at least in bigger cities, ways to clear that out pretty fast. But if it gets too cold, then it's more dangerous. Um, and that happened all the time when I went to school in Boston at Boston University. It was freezing as hell there, too. But they would close down. It's such an old school. It's been there for like hundred over 100 years that all these pipes were super old. And they were worried that the if people were using them a lot and stuff, the water would go through the pipes, it would freeze, and then the pipes would burst. So basically, we would get um, days off, not because of snow days, but just cold days. They're like, it's too cold today, stay home, and you because our pipes are going to burst if you try to use the bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> when you flush the toilet, you're going to doom us all. <laughs> the whole building's going to explode. <laughs> and I remember that school, man, because it, it was all in downtown area, so you you'd walk through an alleyway. And I think I told you this before, but it, it, would, it didn't matter how many layers you had on. I had long underwear on, regular underwear, and then I had um, regular clothes, then a sweater, then a, a jacket, and then a, sometimes an overcoat on top of that. I had earmuffs, a hat, a scarf, gloves. And as soon as you walk through an alleyway, it's like a wind tunnel, and that ice-chilled air would just go through every layer of clothing you had on. It did not matter how much you had on. And my just be like, ah! <laughs> for like three seconds. And I pass the alleyway. I'm like, <laughs> that's just terrifying. So uh, the was- one thing I remember about visiting you in Boston is that nothing could have possibly prepared me for that wind. Oh, the wind is the worst. It just, I is. remember I, I brought like four layers and then it just cut like a knife. To every <laughs> single one of them. It didn't matter what I wore. I was cold. Yeah, because like at least I got in Pennsylvania, maybe a little bit more open where you grew up. So they're like there was some room for the wind to go around. But like in between those buildings, man, it just it's like a a wind tunnel. It's like a laser, a laser of cold and frost. A laser of wind (laughs) just sucking my testes up into my body. (laughs) Yeah, no one ever looked impressive in Boston weather. You know, you're just uh, you guys look (laughs) windswept. And I remember we would wait for the one weekend. There's like one weekend of the year where it would be warm enough for people to be out sunbathing on them. We had this BU lawn by this little, by the Charles river. And that one like week or whatever, all the girls would come out in their like bikinis and like lay out there and, and sunbathe and stuff. And it was probably still like 60 degrees, but you know, um, it didn't I matter. I don't know that isn't Celsius for our friends across the pond, but um, it's, it was, it was, it's like, thir- it's like 30 C. Like, I don't think that's right. Actually. No, <laughs> that's probably like a thousand degrees. I don't know what that is. 4,000 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> We don't know the metric. It was 45 Kelvin, uh, whatever that means. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was the one good, good week of the year. We like, see the chicks, you know, all sunbathing out there. And it was, it was fun. <laughs> uh, it's 18 degrees uh, Celsius. What's just for the reference? Oh, 60 degrees is 18 C. Nice. Well, there you go. So see how it's little, it's not freezing, but it's still kind of nippy to be out there in your bikinis, but they would still do it. Let's talk about the uh, elephant in the room mm. where we grew up, Florida, oh. no, known for its hurricanes. Yes. So many hurricanes. And when we moved there, and I think it was probably our second or third year, because I remember we had the pool installed. Mm-hmm. So second or third summer. Uh, and my mom was out of town. It was just my dad and, and I. And I remember there was a big hurricane coming through. I can't remember the name. And it went from like two to three. And then it went from three to four category people. That's what he's talking about. Category. Cate- yeah. Category three, category four, category four is no friggin' joke. Yeah. Like I think like only goes to five, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember my dad didn't get it <laughs> from Pennsylvania. He's like, what is this? What does <laughs> like, this mean? He didn't understand. And I was like, should we be taking precautions? He's like, no, nah, nah, we'll be fine. <laughs> um, and I remember it was when our neighbors started boarding up their windows. <laughs> that dad was like, all right, I think we're going to do some stuff real quick. <laughs> so I remember we taped all our windows. We did the, the X tape trick. Right. Uh, and we went and we threw all the lawn furniture into the pool. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. So that's how you do it. You, you submerge it and then you can go get it in two days. Um, and we hunkered down. I remember it pretty much missed us. Like we got really fortunate with that specific one. But I remember my dad very suddenly getting it just uh, by looking at what our neighbors were doing. Which do you remember which one that was? 
I don't know. It would have been, t- I would have, whatever, when we were 12 or 13. Yeah, like 95 is right around Andrew time, wasn't it? This was post Andrew because Andrew had come through and like destroyed the state and then built up back in the Gulf of Mexico and went right back across the state, if I remember right. correctly. <laughs> like double wrecked the joint. <laughs> like that guy you invite to your house to stay and he ruins your bathroom. You're like, you can never stay here again. And like a week later, he calls you and he's like, dude, I got to crash. Like, Fine. And I just said Taco Fine. Bell. <laughs> and then he comes in and he wrecks your other bathroom. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. <laughs> Andy, you are not invited back. <laughs> oh, man. And I think one thing comes off of these hurricanes and the hurricane weather. We also do get tornadoes, not like some of the tornado alley states like what is it, like Tennessee and Texas. They get tons of tornadoes. Uh-huh. But like our hurricanes kind of spawn tornadoes. You know, that that's fun. That's we live in the state for a good reason, I guess. Um, but I remember seeing those when I was a real young kid in elementary school. We were out at like recess and suddenly the sky just turns like purple. It's it's an odd thing to see and to feel. You can feel in the air that something is wrong. It's like a like static electricity kind of thing. And the sky was like a weird purple. I'm like, what is happening? And then all of a sudden they rushed us all inside because it was a tornado coming right by our school. And I've seen that once before on the side of the road. I was driving somewhere a long distance. And I remember seeing the sky turn that weird purple color. But after that day, when I was a little kid, I had recurring nightmares for years of exact scenario of seeing that purple sky forming. And my mom was trapped in the backyard. And my dad wouldn't let me go save her because it was too dangerous. <laughs> and wow. I was like, that happened for years. That tornado purple sky. It looks like a post-apocalyptic thing. It's really creepy. Have you ever seen a tornado oh, in person? Um, I've seen funnel clouds. Uh, I remember, I don't know. I was not too old. I think we were still living in Pennsylvania. We had friends in Maryland that my parents sent me off to so they could have a week without me. Good for them. <laughs> and I remember being there and there was like a tornado warning. And I remember at one point being said like, okay, you and Josh go down to the basement because mm-hmm. there, there's funnel clouds forming. And like me not really knowing what that meant, but just knowing like, yeah, basement sleepover. You know? Woo-hoo. <laughs> so nothing too bad or dangerous. <clears throat> no. The other uh, hurricane situation I remember from Florida was I just gotten done working at camp. Um, my CR after our summer after our senior year. And then I was spending two weeks a, with you before I went yeah. to Seattle to go to college. And there were like somehow four or five hurricanes just sort of brewing all at one time. And they were bad ones. Yep. Yeah. And so the first one that came in was um, Charlie. That was a big one. And I remember being at your place for Charlie and us, you know, losing power for at least three or four days, I think. Mm hmm. Um, but then there was, then right after came Francis and I think I got out right before Ivan, but but that's how quickly the letters progressed. That season was that I was only there for two weeks and we went from like C to I. Yeah. Some people might not know about this because we're so familiar with it in Florida, but uh, hurricanes, they name them uh, throughout the year as they become a hurricane, you get the name and they go from the alphabet A to Z or A to Z, as some of you might say. Mm-hmm. Um, so the fact that I went from Charlie all the way to I, Ivan, that's pretty crazy. And I think this year it went for the tropical storms anyway, like double back, like they just, there's double uh, the alphabet this year, but not as many hurricanes so far this year, luckily, but just way more tropical storms than there has been in years. But um, I remember it brought down like half the trees in Winter Park. Yeah, that's a thing in my neighborhood where I grew up. And, and Stephen, too. Yeah, you're also yeah. in Winter Park there um, was there was a beautiful canopy of trees that looked had to be 100 years old. And for some reason, Winter Park was known as like the city of trees. And you could drive down the streets and be in total shade everywhere you went on the street because the, the canopy of trees was just completely covering the streets. And so to, to think of the fact that no hurricane like the past 100 years had affected those trees in any way. And then Charlie comes through and just devastates all of these trees. Destroyed them. And I remember I, the roads were impassable for days. Yeah, people were out there with like volunteering their time to cut up trees with the, any kind of saws they could find. And I remember one of our friends from school who we talked about who was in our coral apartment. I always tell this story because he always like was boasting about his his cool car. It was like a Nissan Z or something like that. Yeah. And it was it was a very fancy sports car to have at our, our age being teenagers. And people were jealous, of course. And he's not a bad guy, but he was really proud of that car. And then all of a sudden, Hurricane Charlie comes and this a tree falls right on top of it, smashes 
the whole thing. It's totaled. Um, but just kind of. And I remember a girl you were seeing that summer, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if you guys were still officially together at that point. Came over for the hurricane. Riley. Yes. And I remember (laughs) that a tree fell. Like right by her car and we couldn't go out check it. And we went out and like the tree literally just missed her car, like a, a split in the branch landed on each side of her car. Oh, yeah. Because that was the thing we and would also have. Her car was fine. She got lucky. But we'll have, we'd have hurricane parties. That was a big thing in Florida. It still is. And basically, if you hunker down with people, your friends in a safe place together and the power might go out for a little while or for two days, you want to be with friends that you can enjoy the company of and play board games by candlelight and that kind of thing. Um, and also you usually have to eat your, all your food. Cause if your power goes out, you don't know how long it's going to be out for. You have to eat everything out of the refrigerator. So you have like a, you grill stuff or cook things because you need to get rid of it before it goes bad. Right, we cleaned out your, your parents fridge. They were, they were in Greece. At the Olympics. Yeah. My parents were at the Greek Olympics <laughs> while all these, in Athens. all these teenagers were back home riding out hurricane Charlie in their house. I remember the couple days were rough because your sister and her jackass boyfriend who we've talked about previously were there. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And it was like him and his dopey friends. I couldn't stand those guys. Um, And at one point we had to I had to go to my I think you had already left at this point um, because I had to go to to, grandpa's place. Yeah. My grandfather's house was. Oh, no, I was. I was there. Oh, you were there, too. Um, But my grandfather's place was totally blocked in. And I don't even he wasn't there. But I think he wanted no, to he get- was he was there. Oh, okay. So it, it was the, your mom like was worried about him being isolated. And so even though everything was fine, she just wanted us to go over and spend the nights with him. Yeah. And check on him. And it was a good thing we did because this his like literally like right down the street from his house, a giant tree had fallen and no cars could get in. So we went over there and started using like saws and stuff like that, getting the tree out of the way. But we were very slow at it until I think someone came by with an actual chainsaw and got that thing out of the way that sounds about right yeah but it was crazy um and then i left the state before the next big one hit yeah and it wasn't as bad for orlando anyway the area the ivan all the trees were already down yeah exactly so it was (laughs) not much more it could do oh and then i have uh in atlanta something i experienced i lived in atlanta for five years and it didn't it's not really prepared for heavy heavy snow in atlanta they have light snows every year but nothing that crazy where they need tons and tons of snow plows and snow machines to clear the streets. They have like one or two for the whole city where in Boston, you could wake up the next morning and all the snow has been plowed out of the streets. Like it's already it's done. Um, but Atlanta, we had this something we called the snow apocalypse because it came out of nowhere and there was a giant snow probably around 2011, if I had to say. OK. Um, and so we we're all working there late at night at CNN, our late shift. And all of a sudden, all this snow comes in and they said they're closing down the subway uh, or in the MARTA stations are closing down any kind of public transportation. They said stay off the roads. And so the company offered to let us stay in the attached hotel to the building. So CNN was going to pay for us to stay the night. And I didn't want to. I wanted to go home. I missed my cat. I wanted to go home. So <laughs> I got in my car. This is after the snow had already stopped falling. And they said, stay out the streets you know, at your own peril. I was like, I'll be fine in my little Nissan Sentra, you know, <laughs> so, mm-hmm. with, you know, no four wheel drive or, you know, probably bald tires. And I get out there and I there's no one on the streets at all. It is completely empty. And it's like, a you know, zombie apocalypse again. And so I try to stop at the stop, one of the stoplights and my car says no. And I just, my car just slides for about three city blocks in downtown Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really scared, but also just like, it's going okay. I'm just sliding home. This is going to be all right. <laughs> and as I was turning the wheel, the brakes weren't working, but the wheel was kind of working for me. So I was like sliding, but yet the wheel was turning the direction I wanted to go, but there's no way I could stop. Um, and then I get to this one hill on the way home and I try to go up the hill and it's not working. My car starts going backwards <laughs> on the hill. <laughs> uh-huh. There's no hills in Florida either. I'm not used to that. We don't have hills. Uh and all of a sudden, these guys come out of nowhere and they start pushing my car up the hill. It's a little hill. And I thank them and they start yelling at me. And I realize they're yelling in Spanish and they're asking for money because <laughs> I didn't give pay them. And I'm like, sorry. And I, I start driving off. But they're basically Gotta trying to go. They're helping people up that particular hill because they saw people falling down over and over again. And they expected them to pay them to help for the help. And I was like, one guy I, tipped him. 
Yeah. You're like, ah, oh, gold mine. Ruined it for everybody. But <laughs> and then CNN gave us a little uh, ice scraper and with that said snowpocalypse on it with the year as they uh, <laughs> for making it through that night. But it was it was pretty crazy. Yeah. The the other place I experienced, let's say some crazy weather, but distinct weather was Seattle when I moved there. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, Seattle, not a city that gets a ton of snow. And I remember when I lived there, probably this is also 2010, 2011. We got 11 inches overnight. That sounds like a lot. And same thing. The city just shut down. Yeah, it'll shut do. <laughs> down. But not only that, Seattle has these gitrontous hills. So, like, if you needed to get to some place that was on another hill, you just weren't getting there. Because, like, Seattle, like, they don't have they basically the t- town names in the city. They call them this hill, this hill, this hill, right? Yeah, Queen Anne Hill. Yeah, right. exactly. Capitol Hill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and I remember I was working at Blockbuster at the time to date myself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and there was I was one of two employees that was within walking distance of the store. So I had to open to close like four days in a row. Oh, God. Because there was literally nobody else that could be there. Well, was anybody else nobody coming else to the store? Physically make it. Oh, yeah. Because you had a ton of people in this neighborhood that were trapped inside. Oh, so they could walk and there. Wanted to go out and do something. Wanted to go walk somewhere and see something. So what did they do? They walked to the Blockbuster video. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> but I remember just being real pissed that I had to open to close for like a week because it was me and this jackass Keegan were the only two guys that could physically get to the store. <laughs> At least you weren't by yourself. But That's right. <laughs> Uh, and then the other thing is Seattle is the rain. Like it's always the standard trope. Oh yeah. Seattle. But in all the movies and stuff, when you see Seattle rain, it's like pouring. Mm-hmm. It's a d- torrential downpour. And that's just a lie. It, it rains like that in Seattle two times a year. <laughs> the rest of the time, it's just this sad, wet kind of misting. <laughs> all the times, everything. It makes it so you can't wear nice things. But you don't carry an umbrella. So you're just wet and angry all the time. Well, that's why people said, yeah, it's kind of a depressing malaise over that city at all times. This is gray and, you know, sad. And <laughs> while I was there, we almost beat the straight days of rain record, <laughs> which is 31 days. And the city was everyone was bummed. No, it was like just the saddest fall ever. You couldn't do anything because it was just always gross out. But I remember as we approached that day, like the city kind of rebolstered itself. Like, yeah, well, at least we're going to break the record. <laughs> and we got to 31 days. And on the 32nd day, it didn't rain. So you missed Correction, it by one day. It did rain. It didn't rain where the meteorological society that was measuring it was. So it didn't count. Oh, that's terrible. So it did rain within city limits, but it didn't rain where they were measuring it. So we 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 didn't we we met the record. Hmm. Everyone was so just mad. A month of after that, there was still another two weeks of rain after that. <laughs> so we're like, you sons of bitches. Just oh, you wasn't rolling. consecutive. <laughs> yeah. I just remember uh, the whole city was a little bit okay and then far worse immediately. Well, it's funny that you mentioned umbrellas and you can't really use it for that kind of rain. Whereas I live in Florida and I barely ever use an umbrella. And Here's why, because unlike, like you said, with yours, it's kind of a constant misting, constant rain in Florida. It's a torrential downpour for about five minutes and then it stops and it might yeah. come back in the, again in like 20 minutes. But that's why I never use an umbrella, because in that torrential downpour, it's also useless. Like you're going to be soaked because it comes from all directions <laughs> or like maybe your upper, upper half is dry, but everything from your waist down. <laughs> yeah. Especially if you're tall. It's just soaked. <laughs> soaked. So it's like you just wait. Like, and if you wait at like five minutes, it'll stop for a while and you can just go in the puddles, go around the puddles and get to your car. So I, I could probably count the amount of times I've used an umbrella in my entire life because it's just, there's no point. Like you just wait it yeah, out. You just don't do it. That's why ponchos are big in Florida. Ponchos are better. Yeah. And also, like, we, usually with our rain comes lightning and thunder, so you shouldn't be out there with an umbrella anyways. You shouldn't be out there, period. True. You just got to wait it out. Um, but it's just so weird. That's that something I, that Se- Seattle also doesn't have is thunder and lightning. Not really. That is nice. It's less of a danger factor to it, so that's that, good. That's another one of those, like, two times a year kind of things. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, it is. I remember dating this girl. Live- oh, Ooh. go ahead. What are you going to say? Hit it. Talk about dating a girl. Oh, this girl. Uh, uh, we, I forgot what I called her in a previous episode, but... uh. Jennifer, we'll call her that. Um, she uh, grew up in um, Rancho Cucamonga, I think it's called 
in California. Okay. Is that the, where it's called? Um, no idea. It's some place that has a funky name. It's real near L.A., but it's like a suburb of that L.A. That's terrible. Uh, but no, I actually visited there. It's very pleasant. It's wonderful. There's uh, roadrunners out there. It's nice. It's not like in the city. Um, but she had never seen rain until the age of seven years old, at least that she was aware of. So the first time she saw rain clouds come out, she said, Mom, what, what is that in the sky? <laughs> and her mom's like, that's a rain cloud. And I had to explain to her, but she was scared because there was something flying in the sky, like above their heads. And she had never seen that before. <laughs> I don't know how many parts of California are like that, but apparently it's pretty accurate. I mean, right now we're in a, a horrendous drought. Oh, God. Rainy season has just been replaced by fire season, which luck we've been very lucky this season. It's bad last, last year. year. By this time, we had been locked inside for weeks at this point. I remember that. Um, and I, I, let me look at my wife, Anna. Anna, when was the last time it rained? <laughs> February. February. Oh my God. Maybe, maybe what, two days in a row or something like that, and then it was gone? Yeah. That's a long time. We're right. That's, that's the level of drought that the part of California we are in is at. That's bad. Um, but then I can think of four, three or four years ago where we got a season's worth of rain in five days and local streets were flooded and all the back roads were flooded. It's almost too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we just have fire season now. That's that's weather now. We need a weather control it's, machine already. I mean, come on. Well, they've got uh, things that they can make it rain. Yeah. These drone things, yeah, that they shoot electric pulses into the air and cause clouds to form and stuff. Yeah. Why don't they use those over you guys? <laughs> uh, well, they just used them over uh, the United Arab Emirates, who are seeing incredible heat wave, like 122 degrees or something like that right now. Oh, wow. And so they're manufacturing these rain situations, these false rain situations. I had heard they were rumoring that from DARPA like 20 years ago. That DARPA was creating weather technology, but. They thought oh, it was they like a, they thought it was sci-fi, but I was like, I bet they are. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but that's happening. Ah, but that's it. Well, I think we have a lot more crazy weather in our future with uh, climate change, global warming, whatever you want to call it. Oh, now. you mean the China hoax? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So with that, I think I think the the craziness is yet to come. I, I would bet in our in our lifetime that there will be an update to the category system for hurricanes. They'll get even more intense and crazy to account to account for higher levels. Yeah. Now, I would actually put an honorable mention here because it's not quite weather, but I think it fits well in this episode. If you could tell me a little bit about your experiences with earthquakes where you are, because I've never been in one uh, before. So I've been through multiple. It's just the. There's sort of the there's the, the movie uh, L.A. story with Steve Martin where they're yeah. like having dinner and one happens and just no one does anything. <laughs> um, there's a lot of that kind of stuff where like I'll be in bed at night watching something and then I'll go, am I shaking right now? And I'll just sit and think about it and go, oh, yeah, I'm shaking. And I look over and Anna's still asleep. Uh. <laughs> Um, so so we have a, a good amount of those where we get tremors or offshoots from earthquakes elsewhere that you can feel. Uh, I can only think of one that I felt felt like it was during the day. I was on my feet walking through the kitchen and it was enough that I kind of went off balance for a second. Wow. That's so that weird. was about it. That being said, the f um, we are due like we are due for a biggie. Yeah. I mean, the, the future, they keep saying that Florida where I'm living is just going to be gone underwater and then where you're living is just going to be disconnected and floating off into the ocean because of a huge earthquake so we're, uh, we're luckily far. we're far enough inland that that probably will not be the case just la <laughs> um la or i mean san francisco is right on the water because then at that point you also have to worry about like uh tsunamis like the the, the tsunamis that come in afterwards absolutely fun um so <laughs> you little experience with earthquakes but th that will also change well, people, give us your experiences with your craziest weather stories. You guys come from different places in the world than us, and you've had different experiences. So send in your stories. Give us an MP3, you guys an have email. snow in Canada? <laughs> what? Tell what us is about this? it, Sean. Do you walk around and it's delivering mail in this snow? That, that's crazy. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, that about wraps up this episode of the Sappy Crap Podcast. Join us next time as we uh, talk a little bit more about the movies that shaped and made our lives. Movie nostalgia. 
That's so right. thanks for joining us for this delightful stumble down memory lane. And remember, the good old days weren't always that good. This podcast was brought to you by A Play on Nerds.